This video will focus on the ultrasound assessment of the Achilles tendon. Patients with Achilles tendon pathology may present acutely with pain and an inability to bear weight, or they may present with chronic pain. We recommend that the patient lies prone with their feet hanging over the edge of the bed. This position makes it easier to scan the Achilles tendon with both passive and active movements. Key anatomical landmarks in this assessment are the Achilles tendon, the medial and lateral heads of gastrocnemius, and the soleus muscle. Deep to the Achilles tendon is the keg of fat pad. Start with the probe in longitudinal orientation with the heel of the probe on the cordalmost part of the patient's Achilles tendon. At this point, we see fibers of the tendon at their insertion into the calcaneus and we see fluid attenuation triangle called the retrocalcaneal bursa. At the point of insertion, you may see the effect of anisotropy where a section of the tendon appears hypoechoic. This happens when the target tissue is at an angle relative to the ultrasound probe. The sound waves are therefore reflected away from the probe and the tissue appears falsely hypoechoic. Rocking the heel of the probe alters the angle to the tendon fibres and eliminates this effect. An isotropy may commonly mimic tendon rupture, so it's important to be aware of this artefact. Now assess the tendon fibres superiorly. A tear would appear as a fluid reflectivity disruption in the fibres. Gradually, we start to see the tendon thin out as the fibres blend with the muscle belly of gastrocnemius. Here, the tendon blends into a normal tendinofibrous unit. A tear at this point would appear as an area of fluid reflectivity between the tendon fibres and the muscle fibres. Once assessment in the longitudinal plane has been completed, turn the probe through 90 degrees and slowly move the probe cordially to assess in axial plane back down to the insertion on the calcaneus. It is advisable to keep downward compression to a minimum while still maintaining adequate contact between the probe and the skin. To achieve this, apply a large quantity of aqueous jelly to the scan region and to the surface of the probe. Loss of contact can easily mimic or mask pathology. At the point where the Achilles tendon is at its greatest thickness, in either longitudinal or axial section, enable colour Doppler to ensure that no flow is detected internally. Internal blood flow may suggest neovascularization which occurs as a result of tendinopathy. As mentioned previously, some more modern machines are equipped with microvascular imaging, such as the Canon SMI. Here we enable SMI to give a more sensitive assessment of the tendon. In this example, the tendon remains avascular and is therefore normal. If a tear is seen, the final stage of the procedure is to assess the distraction gap. Measure the longitudinal distance of the tear in both full extension and flexion of the ankle. The difference between the measurements is the distraction gap and will give a clinician valuable prognostic information. Now let's look at an example of Achilles tendon pathology. Firstly, we see a normal Achilles tendon in longitudinal and axial orientation, then compare to the opposite abnormal side. We can see that the Achilles tendon has a focal area of increased thickness above one centimeter, and that the shape of the tendon is much more rounded. This is an example of a tendinopathy, which usually occurs due to overuse and excessive long-term stress upon the tendon. This results in enlargement, disruption of the fibres, and increased vascularity. Note the difference in sensitivity between colour Doppler and microvascular imaging, as neovascularization is more clearly demonstrated when SMI is enabled.
Here are a few more examples of Achilles tendon pathology. These sagittal MRI images show thickening of the Achilles tendon in keeping with Achilles tendinopathy. The same patient subsequently presented acutely with pain in the posterior lower leg. Urgent ultrasound showed this discontinuity of the Achilles tendon with a central area of mixed echogenicity material. Note the thickening of the tendon in keeping with the prior tendinopathy seen on MRI. This is another example of an Achilles tear on ultrasound. And finally, the same pathology as seen on MRI. Note the high signal within the Achilles tendon indicating a rupture. This patient had surgical repair of the Achilles tendon tear as seen by the surgical screw on x-ray. This concludes our tutorial on the ultrasound assessment of the Achilles tendon. Thanks for watching.